Hi and welcome to this demo on cluster interfaces. For your information, I have a second cluster configured and I'm going to use that one for this demo. This cluster is identical to the one we configured during the lab setup. I log in using SSH, but from Windows you could use PuTTY or any other tool that allows you to run a secure session to the cluster shell. Now we're logged in and we're in the admin mode, as you can tell from the prompt. Then we hit the tab key and we see the root of all possible commands. You can compare this to a directory structure. Every command you see here is the start of another subset. You could say this is a hierarchical structure of commands. When we enter a question mark, we get to see the same list, but now with a bit of explanation on what every command offers. Now, for example, the command net or network will give us access to network subcommands or arguments. When we type net int, and when we press enter, we will change to the net int environment. And we run tab again, and we pick our next argument of the net int command. Or we can go back one step by typing dot dot. If we want to go all the way back, we run top. Another nice thing to know is that Ctrl L will clear the screen. Now a very important feature is the option dash fields. Whenever you want to list something, then you will get to see all the properties of a certain item. If you just want to see a selected list of properties, then you enter the option dash fields, and then the fields that you want to select. For example, if you want to see all of the disks, but you're only interested in the node that the disks are cable to, and whether they are part of an aggregate, you run disk show dash fields node comma aggregate. And as you can see, some disks are in an aggregate and others are not. And some are connected to node 1 and others are connected to node 2. And if I would run it without dash fields, then I will get to see a lot more properties, like what's the type, the size, etc. As discussed, we can go from the admin mode to the advanced mode, and we should have more commands than in the admin mode. So from the admin mode, once more, we see this list. But when we go to the advanced mode, we have some more commands. And from the diag mode, this list will even grow. We can go back to the admin mode by typing set admin. And if we want to know the exact option of a command, we can run the man command. The man command or manual pages are a very old but still common feature of every Unix and Linux environment. For example, if I want to work with logical interfaces, I can run man net int. This will give me information on how to use that command. The nice thing is that, like the CLI, the manual pages are hierarchical as well. So from the net int command, I can investigate deeper by running man net int create, for example. This will tell us how to create logical interfaces. Now let's see how to go to the node shell and then how to go to the system shell. So I run node run cluster one node one. Now I can run sysconfig, which will give me information which is really only about this particular node. And you see no cluster information whatsoever. For example, you see the serial number of the node. Now I exit and I'm back in the cluster shell. Now let's enter the system shell. First we have to unlock the Diag user. Then we give that user a password. And we enter it twice. And if we want to log into the system shell, we first have to be in the Diag mode. So we run set D. Or set Diag would also be possible. And as with the node shell, we have to enter the node name we want to access. So we log into the system shell of node 1. And to be honest, getting started with ONTAP means that we have no business in this shell. Later, maybe in an advanced training, you will get back in here. But for now, I think it suffices that you know about the system shell and how to get in and out. So we exit and we're done. Now finally, we'll log into System Manager, so we open a browser and connect to the Cluster Management IP. We log in as Admin and see the dashboard, with a lot of options. Also, we see that we have unassigned disks and that we run on tab 9.6. And since NetApp is developing a new version, they offer us a preview, a read-only preview, of that new version. 
in which the look and feel will change dramatically. When we go there and select an overview of our cluster, we see that it's named cluster 1 and it has two nodes. As I suggested, we will not lean heavily on this user interface, but it will pop up every now and then. Now to summarize, we discussed the different interfaces like Cluster Shell and System Manager. We explored the different modes of the Cluster Shell. And we noticed that the Cluster Shell is hierarchical in structure, as are the manual pages. And we also had a look at the Node Shell and the System Shell.